away they go. Port Vale then attacking the goal to the right. Andy Hill getting his first touch. Hill's chasing this one. And uh, goalkeeper Muggleton had to get down quickly. Suddenly there was a, a gap appearing in that Stoke defence. And a big Lee Mills was quickly onto it. Formerly with Derby and Wolves. Get that away well. Sanford with a header for Stoke. Ian Bogey now for Port Vale. Orlickson knocking it forward. Glover getting it away. Only as far as Gleghorn. Esky Solido plays the ball inside, but uh, Gleghorn is down uh, with a challenge there. It'll be a free kick to Stoke. Case of both players there, Brian, going in for a ball. It's going to be one of those matches. There's, there's going to be no sort of love loss between both sides. They're going to go in fully committed to it. And Mr Singh has got an important role to play that he shuts down on it early. And let's remember what we're here for is playing football. Local derbies, they're always the same. There is always a bit of bite, a bit of needle in them. And therefore the referee's got to settle it down as quickly as his can. Stretcher on. Of course, it's the uh, with the new rules this year, or the new interpretation, the referees have to go basically to the player and say... Do you want treatment on the field or not? Or do you want treatment or not? And if he wants treatment on the field, if he wants the treatment, he has to go on a stretcher and get it off the field. But I think Gleghorn's injury probably is a little more serious than... Uh, it looked close to the knee to me, Brian. You know, it's the studs going in round about the knee. Well, they will certainly miss him, Stoke. Toddy Orlickson with the free kick. Not a very good one either. Bogey, formerly at Newcastle, then a spell in London with Millwall and then Lake Orient. Tankard playing the ball in to Lee Glover. Number eight is Andy Porter. Here's Hill again. And uh, Clarkson getting that away quite comfortably for Stoke. Kevin Scott chasing this one. And wins a free kick. Well, that was kicked away by the Fort Vale defender there. Actually, Dean Glover saying we didn't hear the whistle. I think it was uh, Gareth Griffiths who actually, yes, who kicked it away. Well, whether he heard the whistle or not, he's going to get a yellow card. Kicking the ball away. Dean Glover saying quite clearly to the referee, we did not hear your whistle. It is a problem for players, you know, there's a good atmosphere here, very vocal, and therefore that could be a possibility. If not, the young lad's a silly boy. So the big defender who passed a test this morning to play in this game. That's something he uh, least wanted was a yellow card so early on. Andy Porter with a high clearance. Gets underneath it as well, up to Lee Mills. But forward again towards Lee Glover. This is Hill again. He's carefully playing the wall towards John McCarthy. Does well there. Beats Wallace, flicks the ball for Mills. Lee Glover waiting in the middle. But a good strong challenge there by Sigurdsson. A throw to Port Vale. McCarthy tries to get the ball into the centre there, but... Kevin Keane that time getting it away. Leghorn still off the pitch. I understand he's having stitches in a knee wound. But he, I understand he is coming back, so uh, Stoker holding on with ten men at the moment. Nigel Gleghorn soon to come back when the doctor's done his work. Lee Glover, Stoke still holding him at bay, Orlickson playing it to Sigurdsson, Kevin Scott trying to make an impression there as well, Wallace getting it through, Scott again but flicking it wide and Tankard who looks a really good accomplished left back gets the ball away for Port Vale. As Tankard's impressed me, he's been a very good left back and he's improving all the time I like his composure on the ball gets forward good engine good little tackle a very accomplished young player well Nigel Gleghorn just about to come back that really was
was a quick bit of stitching there. Well done, the medical staff here at Stoke. And Vince Overson with the free kick. Up towards Scott. So Gareth Griffiths, a name take, and a stain. He's complaining still to the referee there, as you can see. Can't hear you. Well, I can tell you the crowd here inside Victoria Ground today is generating an awful lot of noise. Glover going for this one, but beaten in the air. Pesky Solido. Throw to Stoke. Lee Sanford will take it. Did well there. Pesky Salido did well also. Horikson trying to find Kevin Scott. Well cut out though by Dean Glover. Such a good pass there. Cut out for Stoke by Clarkson. Horikson to Clarkson, another former Birmingham City player. Scott's ball inside, picked up again quite comfortably by Porter. Sanford. Pescos Lido's making a little run down this left-hand channel. And does really well. Well, it looks... He looked to be second favourite there against uh, Griffiths. But still got his shot in well. Yeah, he's looked sharp, Brian, on the three times he's been in possession. He's kept his team in possession. Done the job properly, done it well. He looks very sharp to me. Bogey to McCarthy. there by Ray Wallace another yellow card well, what's interesting Brian is both sides are playing with wingers and therefore people are diving in at wingers and McCarthy has got the ability and Guppy to take players on and they, they're always aware of this player diving in I thought Wallace committed himself much too far away from the ball there So second yellow card of the game goes to Ray Wallace. First one went to Gareth Griffiths. Andy Hill with the free kick. This is Tankard. McCarthy. Cut out by Wallace. Sanford. Dean Glover with the header, good experienced defender for Paul Fail. Esky Solido, Wallace. Scott coming in quickly for this one and wins it. Kevin Scott now does really well. Across the face of the Port Vale goal, goes behind for the goal kick. With warm applause for that effort. Scotty did exceptionally well there. He comes onto this pass. From, uh, Wallace flicks it round him with the outside of the foot, deliberately meant that. He, good job he didn't go down there, could have been a decision or a penalty for the referee to make. Just struck it with his left foot, not his favourite foot, pulled it wide. Kevin Keane, Off back by uh, Scott to Gleghorn, to Sanford, to Keane, who's come to this side of the field. Griffiths getting it clear. It's Bogey. Always a neat player, Bogey, but the ball goes straight to Clarkson there. And now for Wallace, Keane, Pesky Solido. And Hill did well. Well, then he gives it to Gleghorn. Crossed in again. Knocked away that time by Dean Glover. Stoke at a corner. Volumes increased. Former Villa and Middlesbrough defender for Port Vale conceding that corner. Dean Glover. Toddy Orlickson will take it. And goes beyond the ball for the goal kick. It's a 
shame about that because the one thing you don't want to do at this early stage is give the ball back to the opposition. You want to put them under as much pressure as you possibly can. And Augustin then just knocked it far too long. Hadn't quite got his touch because he has normally a lovely touch. Russell White with the uh, goal kick. Sanford bringing it forward again. And Gareth Griffiths. Covered just in time. Porter's long ball straight through to the Stoke goalkeeper Carl Muggleton. Once with Leicester and Stoke. With uh, Leicester and Celtic, rather. Now with Stoke. Griffiths banging it forward again. Free kick for the foul on Lee Mills. There's a few players involved around that ball there, wasn't it? Hill. McCarthy. Big signing in the summer, McCarthy from uh, York City. If the ball's ever going to come out of that corner, it will now because it's a free kick for Stoke. But it's a derby game that's generated a fair bit of passion, John. Oh, it's going to do that, Brian. You know, you, you see there McCarthy on four occasions he lost the ball and got it back again. That is what Roger will be asking his players to do: fight for every ball, scrap for every ball in the first 20 minutes, and then we'll suddenly settle down and try and play. Record signing of 450,000 from York City in the summer, John McCarthy, 25 years old. Some wet stuff coming out of the sky. Very pleasant shower at the moment. Give a little bit of zip to the surface. This is Lee Mills. Lee Glover. Back to bogey. And now for Hill. Mills again. Uh, some good interplay here by Port Vale. And a shot from Porter that was... Not that far off the mark, but uh, there's some good work leading up to it. There was some good football played then by Port Bell. Starting at the right back here, Hill, who just played a little ball to the front and off they built off of that. Now, Port Vell, I don't, I don't know what Greavesy said about them last week, but for me, they're a side that can play football. Rudgy wouldn't have it any other way. He wants it done that way. And they can play on occasions when they get the ball to feet like that. They look a very good side. You have to uh, look at John Rudge's record. I think he's been there about 12 years. He joined them in the fourth division. Took them to the first. Three lots of promotion, two lots of Wembley. Speaks for itself, Brian. Does rather. It's a good long clearance by Clarkson. Banged away very effectively by Glover. Overson. Clarkson again. Clipped off. No, it's a throw to Port Vale. Alan Tankard will take it. Porter battling on, supported there by Glover, Lee Glover. They get a free kick. One of those little unsung heroes, a real dynamo in the middle of the field, Andy Porter, he strikes me. Uh, Never beaten, gets in all the time, That's right. good tackler, good at supporting the front, good little player to have in your team. Well, here comes the free kick. I think Guppy's going to take this one. I haven't seen a lot of uh, Steve Guppy yet. We shall before the day's out, I'm sure. Power header away as far as Bogey, driven back by him, but well wide of the Stoke goal. The rain really pouring down now. So that'll make it interesting. The ball will zip about Brian on this lovely green surface now, and it should be better for playing good football.
another good decision of mine to leave the raincoat and cap in the car, isn't it, eh? That's two of us. <laughs> That's a good bit of work by Sanford. Greg Horn banging it forward. Dean Glover to Tankard. Real blow for Port Vale, having started really, they were very pleased with their opening day draw at the baseball ground against Derby, and then they lost to Millwall with their second game, but the real sickener for them was to go out of the Coca-Cola Cup over two legs to Huddersfield Town. It's Porter battling away again, Wallace playing the ball in, and Porter getting to grips there with Kevin Scott. Scott is something like a six foot four. Against Porter's what? 5859. Five, Keen, the little touch. Overson looking around, getting the ball back to his goalkeeper Muggleton. Surprise, yeah. I'm looking at Leghorn and I, I don't see a plaster over that cup line. It just seems to be open still. Porter trying to get in. Leghorn chasing Porter. Sanford away, not a very effective clearance. Charge down. Andy Hill crossing the ball in again. And uh, with the saving header at the expense of a corner. Well, big Gareth Griffiths might have something to say about this. Glover's in there too. Lee Mills is a big lad. But Stoke get it away quite successfully. Ian Bogey. Guppy. Hill. again, dodging his way around Gleghorn, banging in a good cross there, hit by Griffiths, actually after the early break or two by Stoke, Port Vale territorially have had the better of it. Yes, they've, they've got the ball out wide, especially on the right hand side to McCarthy, and I think the orders are coming from the box, just cross it in, keep pressurising, keep putting balls across into the box. And Griffiths then came up and uh, nearly got to that ball. He's a strong header of a ball, the young lad. McCarthy. Sanford. Griffiths getting it clear up towards Mills. McCarthy. This is Tankard. And away comes Stoke now. Oryxson with Scott up ahead of him. Pesky Solido too. Here's well, the ball played wide for Clarkson, but Clarkson really had no chance of getting that. And Port Vale covered that well. Get the ball out to Guppy. with some space now to find McCarthy on this side. Oh, 
Easily cleared by uh, Sigurdsson. Tankard. Guppy. Here goes Wallace. Comes to Orlikson. Might lift one forward now. In fact, he tried to find Scott, but it was cut out again. And an offside against Lee Glover. Brian, I just can't believe Orlikson. He is the type of player you normally like to see on the ball because he's such a good passer. He can split defences, he can change play, and he's just given three simple balls away. Whether it's the pressure of a local derby, I don't know, but he looks very nervous at the moment, and he's just not doing what we know he's capable of doing. Free kick with uh, Carl Muggleton. Trying to get a look at Gleghorn's knee there in the stitches. Well, that's fortuitous, it goes straight to uh, Pesky Salido. Didn't really get much purchase on that one. Griffiths cleared that. McCarthy chasing. Strong challenge there by Sanford. Bogey gets past him. This is Porter. Griffiths. Oh, he's played a ball in there that uh, Mills almost got on. He was just a little bit on his back foot there, Lee Mills. Hill. Now Clarkson to bring it forward for Stoke. Keen outside him. Wallace inside. Sanford. Orlikson. Sanford again, hoisted a long one there towards Wallace. And a foul by Ray Wallace. Really, that's the first time since the first five minutes that we've seen Stoke show a bit of passion and pass the ball accurately. They've knocked the ball about, and they look much better when they do this, when they play this way. John Rudge has just come down onto the bench, something he's not happy with. <laughs> Port Vale manager. bemoaning the loss of key players so early in the season but uh, he's a shrewd tactician is John Rudge and he's had a as we've said earlier on a really terrific record here at uh, Stoke at uh, Port Vale bounce beat the Stoke defenders a slippery turf beat Lee Mills I suppose, Brian, this is the first sort of slippery surface the boys have had either to train on or to play on so far this season. We've had such a dry summer. That's right. And therefore, I think we'll see a few of the players maybe slipping and sliding. But you were right earlier on. I was looking at Mills. He was on his heels when that ball was played yes. through for him. He was a super ball. He just wasn't quite ready for it. But he's the type of player. He's got a good goal record. And uh, I think give him half a chance around that box. He'll hit the target. Didn't have a very long spell at Derby, did he? But I think he it was something like seven goals in 16 appearances. That's not a bad That's ratio. That's not a bad ratio, is it, when you go to a club? Because it takes you two or three games, I suppose, to get in, to know the players around you. That's right. Like that. Overson in as though his life depended upon it. But Stoke lose possession again as Lee Mills takes it up on the far side. and goes Overson again.
Tankard. Once again for Tankard. The Glover trying a turn. Wallace held him up just for that moment, which was long enough. Dean Glover. Steve Guppy. Ooh, given away badly there to Pesky Solido. But Port Vale giving very little away at the back at the moment. Nice turn there by Lee Glover. Picking up McCarthy with a lovely ball. Now, can he get the return ball in there towards Lee Mills? Just a little too far ahead by McCarthy, but a good sweeping move and an excellent ball by Lee Glover out to McCarthy in the first place. Yeah, it's a great ball. He just turns here, good first touch, turns his defender, plays the ball accurately, good pace. McCarthy didn't quite give the boys time to get on this. It's just a little bit too narrow. It should have been just delayed a second and pulled back. Always had a soft spot for him since his Nottingham Forest days. I was in Brian Clough's office with him once with, uh, when Lee was sorting out something about a contract and he really stuck to his guns against Brian. And I thought, my goodness, he was only about 18 then. I thought, you've really got something about you. And he's a talented young Scottish player, Lee Glover. This is Kevin Keane, once of West Ham. Ian Bogey getting it away, Wallace. Hill, the long ball, the flag is up for an offside against Lee Mills. Try and lob the keeper, he very nearly did. Russell White was backpedalling, that was a cheeky little chip there by Nigel Gledhorn. He's so unlucky, Brian. He's looked up, he's seen Muscle White off his line, he looks up there, and there goes the chip, and it's floating, and Muscle White had to give in. It was nearly perfection. It would have been lovely to have seen that dip in. I'm not supporting Snow, but, you know, the skill alone from Gledhorn was wonderful. Kevin Keane up towards Scott. And a powerful torpedo like header there by Vince Overson. If anybody in this division leads by example, it's Vince Overson. Here's Lee Sanford. Toddy Olixson. Might he try a shot here? Down goes the keeper. It's a good move. And here's Olixson. He just controls the ball, looks up, and he says, right, I'm going to let this go. And he let fly. On target. You can ask no more from the players. And he put it on target. and it just slid off the top of his head that came off McCarthy it'll be a stoke throw half an hour gone Glover cut out by Sanford Scott couldn't keep it going Porter battling away. Here comes Scott again. I think I may have called him Kevin Scott earlier on. Actually, it's what the program is. Keith Scott. This is Porter. Or rather, Guppy. And here's McCarthy. Mills. He thought a moment ago he may have been struggling a little bit to Lee Mills. McCarthy playing the ball in towards Guppy, Bogey picks it up, nice control there, finds Tankard with it, might try a long shot here.
Muggleton had no problem there, did he, with that? But Tanker did strike the ball well, but Muggleton had the perfect position. Tankard again. Southern boy had a little spell with Southampton, Tankard, and then uh, broke into the league properly at Wigan. Lover getting it back quite comfortably. Good jump again by Overston. Keen. Oh, it finds Gleghorn. Well, that was on target too. Charged down by Andy Hill. Clarkson chip in again. Easy one this time for the keeper. from the midfield. Ian Bogey, who played his early football up in Newcastle with Paul Gascoigne before he went south with Millwall and Orient. Guppy. Of course, also had a spell at Newcastle after Wickham Wanderers. Tankard. Keane gets it away. hasn't actually had uh, made a lot of progress down that left flank yet. Not hasn't as, he hasn't received a lot of the, the, no, the service, Brian. You no. know, you, you've got to have the service to be able right. to go and show what you can possibly do. And I've just felt that they've not played into his feet. He's made good positions. I've been watching him because I, I felt he was a danger to Stoke. And Clarkson might have, Ian Clarkson might have a hard day today. But so far, they, they haven't given him the ball as he would like it, just to his feet. Off goes Scott. Fair. It, the game's just lost it a little bit at the moment, but Port Vale is still pressurising, still trying to get forward. Tankards. Wallace should get this away, making life a bit difficult for himself, though. And for a moment for Stoke as well, but Scott picks it up again, Keith Scott. Keen. Griffiths chasing back Pessy Salido after him. Sanford's head up. Foul by him, a foul on McCarthy, a free kick to Port Vale. What stands out at the moment to me, Brian, is both sets of forwards. I will forgive Pesky Salido because he hasn't made a mistake. He's done exceptionally well. But both, the, all the other players are giving the ball away. You've got to keep your side in possession. Leghorn chasing. McCarthy in possession and does really well. Oh, it was an ambitious overhead attempt there by Lee Mills. It didn't come off. And Stoke get the ball up to Harris. Keane playing it forward again. Tell you something else, John. Uh, Port Vale might well have come here as second favourites, but I've been very impressed by their spirit and their organisation so far. Their attitude has been superb. They've knuckled down to it. They've tried to do the right things. The two midfield boys are getting tired and winning a lot of the ball and spraying the ball about mainly out this side to McCarthy, and he's looked a threat. McCarthy's crossing ability is very, very good. Glover. That was Steen Glover to Lee Glover. Now Guppy, 
Oh, it's a good ball forward for Porter to chase. And Sanford in for the real last ditch. Here it's there for Stoke. Excellent covering by Sanford there. Excellent covering. He was round on the cover. Had to go in with his right foot, which wouldn't be his strength, but got in there and just played it away. Tankard with the uh, throw for Port Vale. A little under ten minutes of the first half left then. Nil nil in this Potter is derby. It's a league lover. Cut out by Gleg Horn. Pesca Salido winning that in the air. Five foot four against six foot four of uh, Gareth Griffiths. Bogey delayed that pass until the last possible moment. The ball came off Wallace. It'll be a throw to Port Vale. I think Rudgie will have something to say about that. How you can get beaten in the air. I used to have that problem. I want the greatest <laughs> in the air. And the stick I used to get off my managers. Scott. Lee Mills. McCarthy getting it back to Hill. Turn there by Lee Glover. No foul by Vince Overson. Not gets Glover. The referee took a good look at it. I think probably made the right decision there. Yeah, I think that was a fair enough tackle from Vince Overson. I've got to be truthful, I wouldn't like to play against him myself, but he's strong, he's a good tackler, he's, he's committed to the game, he's a winner. You know, they're the type of players you want in your side, wholehearted. You know, if he makes a mistake, it's an honest mistake. Good captain. As you can see there, looking around, barking out his orders, organising people, and up he goes with this one. Yes, judged it perfectly again. The header goes up to Kevin Keane. Tucked inside this time for Orlikson. Flick with the outside of the boot. And again, Port Vale. Snapping the door shut in the midfield. They'll need to do it so again. Here's Gleghorn. Clarkson. Ian Bogey. Carthy. Just one of those misunderstandings there. The winger was wanting the ball over the top and Hill thought he wanted it to feet. Communication is well, what was wrong there. Well, it's the first there. time they play together. Andy Hill, of course, only joining them a couple of days ago, so McCarthy really wouldn't have had any work really yet with uh, his new fullback. Griffiths had not passed his fitness test. Andy Hill would have been uh, drafted straight in as a centre back. Up goes Griffiths for that one, though. Lee Glover. Sigurdsson after him. Will it come to Guppy? No. Kevin Keane got there first. Gets it back again from Clarkson. Stoke now trying to get on the move again. Pesky Salido. But the ball comes through to Lee Mills. And now with uh, Steve Guppy. Gleghorn. They are really bustling. They are working hard, Port Vale. They're not giving Stoke time to think, let alone breathe. And the shot goes away over the top there. It's covered there by the keeper. Uh, Andy Hill shot. I think that was more across, Brian, don't you? Come shot. We, whenever you were asked in the dressing room at half time as a fullback, you'd say, oh, I, I meant, meant a shot, Governor, <laughs> you know. <laughs> What happened to that cross? No, it's a shot, Governor. Well, it was nearly a very effective shot. Up goes Scott. On goes Pesky Salido. Oh, that was always a difficult one there for Muscle White. To be fair, Pesky Salido worked so hard at closing down there, Chase. He looks a yard quicker than anybody on the pitch to me. Whether it's because his legs are small, he's going at 90 miles an hour, but he is moving about, he's, he's making things happen, which you've got to as a player. 
So it's a Stoke corner. Overson's up there. Sanford's in there. Overson's header. Oh, they cleared it off the line. I think it was Steve Guppy who actually got the ball over the crossbar. But it was a good header from the big defender. The goalkeeper, Musselwhite, has come here. No man's land. And there's Guppy. Good defending. Unusual position for him, but they must place him there deliberately, Raji, because of his height. He's got it over the bar. Another corner for Stoke. Pressure building now, again on uh, Port Vale. They've defended really well so far. Coming towards the last three minutes of the first half. Deep corner again. Griffiths powering the header away outside the box. Keane struggling to get back to it. Kevin Keane for Ray Wallace. Naros Sigurdsson getting it forward. Keane again. Pesky Solido. Ooh, he went down Porter there very comfortably. And now McCarthy. Heinz Mills. A chest down for Glover. They claim a handball there. Off uh, Orlikson. I suppose Glover and Orlikson would have been teammates at uh, Nottingham Forest together. That's what you don't try and hand the ball straight in front of not the really. referee. Even that man we say needs glasses at times didn't miss that one. I'm not saying Mr. Singh, I'm saying the referee, Brian. Glover. Guppy. Certainly a goal-saving header of his on the line a moment ago. Lee Glover playing it in again, and Ray Wallace getting back. You know, Stoke get a lot of players back in the box. They defend in depth. You know, there's Gleghorn in there. There's, there's, there's maybe eight players back in, back in the box here. Port Vale throw. Guppy. Some good work there by Guppy, but the ball had just drifted out of play. Neat player, Guppy. Got good skills, good left peg, and he can take players on either side. You know, he's got the ability to win a match on his own purely by his ability to dribble the ball past defenders and get his crosses in. Mills. Tankard. This is Keen. Tankard again. Lou Makari, the Stoke manager in his uh, program notes today, was saying the only important thing in a derby game is to win it. The result comes first, the performance comes second. The only thing more satisfying is to win it and to play well. You get the impression that Stoke have got a really hard task to win this one today. They're not finding it easy at the moment. To be fair to Port Vale, they've had a lot of the ball and uh, really they're pulling all the stops out to try and get a result themselves here. Sanford knocking it forward again. It comes for a goal kick to Port Vale. I think both managers will be saying at half time, Brian, we've got to get better service to the front, and when they do get it up front, they've got to be able to hold it up and wait for players to come round them and support them. You know, at the moment, there's a lot of ball being given away, both ends, whereby they're not doing enough to keep their side in possession. But a good first half for Port Vale. Excellent first half for Port Vale. They've come here to play and they've, they've tried to play. They've tried to do the job properly. 
What is Derby then at the Victoria Ground? Vince Overson with one header that was headed off the line by Steve Guppy just before half time. The nearest thing we've had to a goal. But still plenty to play for here. Stoke City nil, Port Vale nil. And uh, Port Vale who've defended and have showed good organisation against the side, I suppose, really, that came here as a favourite. Let's have a quick word with the Stoke man. Got to use that ability, but he can only do it with the ball when they give him the ball, and they haven't been doing it. Well, no substitution's been made at half-time. Stoke in the stripes, then attacking the goal to our right. anything else in a derby game two mills cut out well by Lee Sanford up towards Keith Scott again would take Stoke to the top tonight a victory of any sort would actually put them uh, level top and I suppose they're one of those sort of clubs I mean they don't look a bad side for all the fact that I think Port Vale have played well today John but uh, they look the sort of side that if they get one or two injuries I don't think there's an awful lot underneath I think Hallam. Lou would tell you that wouldn't no, he? I was speaking to Lou Wednesday and he said he's not got the biggest squad in the world he's got 15 players basically that he can call on and uh, you've always got that worry, Brian, that it will be an injury to one of your, your main stay, one of your main players, and that would be a problem for him. I think he may have a little bit of money to spend, and uh, I know he's been doing a lot of miles trying to look for players and find players, but it's difficult at this time of the year. Well, it's Paul Musselwhite. That started down on the south coast, born at Portsmouth. And the ball goes behind for corner, is it? Yes, indeed it is. For Port Vale. Up comes Griffiths, who you fancy might be a real threat standing at six foot four. And normally a good header of the, to boot. Right? And we'll probably look for him, but in fact it was Lee Mills who got the header in, glancing away across beyond the far post. That was good service from Guppy, it's a good in-swinging ball, nice height, if you attack it and just get in front of your defender, you can really power the header in. He got in front of his defender, couldn't quite get the power onto the header. So Carl Noggleton with the goal kick. again Andy Hill Lee Glover this is Ian Bogey oh it's gone past Overson here's Bogey with a chance it's a terrific goal by Ian Bogey what a super goal what a super charge bit of play as he goes past uh, Overson he really puts on the power there. Shows good pace there. Overson just left a bit short of pace. He's got his strength in his legs and he crosses his ball in at oh, the near post. Inside the I've near been post. looking at my goalkeeper there and saying, Muggleton, I'm sorry, my old son. You should have had that covered. There it is again. He gets by and he thumps the ball inside. You've got to cover your near post as a keeper. And that's got to go down as a mistake from Muggleton. 
but certainly a terrific bit of player from a mid uh, work by a midfield man getting up there so quickly and I was astonished actually with the pace that he showed to get past Vince Overson yes it's a great run of his Brian as you say a powerful run but he's been making those runs isn't he yeah. in the first half and never quite got that ball played to him though. Gleghorn now bogey trying to hold him up Gleghorn playing it into Olixson Clarkson with the cross Tankard. Sigurdsson, oh, given away. McCarthy chasing, this time the keeper's there. And this, remember, in a Port Vale side without arguably their best defender, Neil Aspen, who's got the shoulder injury, without their top scorer, Martin Foyle, who's got a toe injury. And a side that's really not had a very good start. That, in fact, was the first league goal they've scored this season. And it was an excellent one by Ian Bogey. Now, really, Stoke has now got to start thinking, right, we're going to push a few more players forward. And here's the goal coming up again here. Look how strong he is. He's kept over Sanoff, who is a, a very strong player, I assure you. And he's got good power into that shot but it's gone inside the near post inside the keeper well here come uh, Port Vale again this time Lee Glover supported here by Andy Porter hits that straight at Sigurdsson it comes out to Kevin Keane up to Pesky Solido it's a foul uh, by Andy Porter on the little Stoke striker Free kick to the home side. Ended amicably enough, but here's Clarkson with the free kick. Vince Overson's gone forward. Lee Mills has gone back to mark him. An interesting time to get a goal as well for Port Vale because they, they daren't sit back and try and defend it now. They've still got to be playing the same way. Leghorn. Mighty try it. Wallace driven in. Well, wide of the goal. The deflection there, Brian, from Wallace's shot. It's a corner for Stoke. Kevin Keane going across to take it. Stoke looking for a quick response. Overson's in there. Sanford's up from the back. Played it wide. Knocked away again. Olixson will try and keep it going. And it's a Stoke throw. Finding Ian Clarkson. Sigurdsson. Goal kick. Keith Scott has won two important headers there, but they just haven't gone down to their own players. It's, he's very strong in the air. and the, I just feel that Stoke have got to get somebody out wide and get crosses across to him. That is his strength, Keith. He, he likes balls being crossed to across the face of goal and he's, he's got that power in the air and he will score goals but he hasn't had that service to go after Kenny old George, uh, John Rudge telling Gary at half time they're going to get the forwards to hold the ball up a little bit and so on didn't say anything about midfielders coming through and scoring a goal like Ian Bogey have done a superb job in the first half which you you mentioned you know they've won a lot of the ball they've been spraying it about it's just that uh, the forwards had not really held it up that's right you know he's a tackler isn't he bogey and he had to, he had to make the decision of whether to play walker or bogey and he's, he's been bold and that's when as a manager you you right. really deserve a pat on the back because right. you've made the right decision so far, anyway. Clarkson. Oh, 
good fullback in Clarkson. Very solid player. He's just just a bit of a long stride he comes onto this ball. Just stretching a bit too far. It's just gone away from him, just off his foot. Short in the stride, Clarkie. That's the answer to that answer. line, isn't it? Get him on target. Judge that one, Pesca Solido. Bit of pace there as well, and a good shot. Just uh, a half mistake there by Andy Hill. Pesca Solido was onto it, and again the pace we saw from Bogey a few moments early. That's a good run. Look at the power the little fella's got here, and it's a great strike. It's on target. The keeper's had to work. He's looked all afternoon as though he's going to be a threat he just hasn't had the service really that he would like which is more of the ball to his feet or more of the ball played down the side of defenders Sanford wide to Gleghorn a little touch there from Pesky Solido no Port Vale pick it up again is Ian Bogey the goal scorer Alan Tankard Steve Guppy oh he's done really well there He's continuing to do well. Rifling a fine ball. Oh, no, not such a good one, but it was a lovely piece of play by Guppy there. Yes, he's a very skillful player. He's got a good left peg. He, he likes to tempt people into tackling him, and then he just glides by them. I tell you, when you look at him uh, jiggling with a ball like that, uh, he put me very much in mind of Darren Anderton at Tottenham, you know. Yeah. A bit like Tommy Hutchinson to me, remember yes. Tommy Hutchinson, just a long stride and glide by players. Good balance. Yeah, you're, you're right, Anderton's the same, isn't it? Pesca Salido. Well, these are slightly perturbing times for Lou Macari as the clock ticks on. 12 minutes of the second half gone. Here come Port Vale again, Bogey caught in possession unfairly by Orlikson and Scott and a free kick to Port Vale. A bit unfortunate there because Tankard had made a very good break there and was just about to receive the ball with a lot of space in front of him. unfortunate there you know he's been brave he's gone in there and it's just hit his arm that's out of play intentionally but um, Mr Singh in a better position than I and he's done a very very good job up to now I think, I think so too Ian Clarkson with the throw Pesky Solido trying to get away from Dean Glover short ball to Keith Scott back to Pesky Solido Scott with the shot goal kick to Paul Vale it's certainly a livelier second half. Yeah, but that's how you build up. You know, obviously both managers have said to their front men, come on, you've got to get into the game. You've got to make better angles to receive the ball. When you receive it, like there, you've got to keep us in possession. There's a shot. Yeah, by all means, go on. If you're a striker, have a pop at that goal. You never score goals unless you do, Brian. Well, that comes to McCarthy. This is Mills towards Lee Glover, not in a way by Clarkson. Good defending by Clarkson, Brian. I think uh, 
Glover with Lee Glover just for a little bit maybe he should have had a, a foul there he just got a nudge at the right time here's a cross coming if you see the fullback look he just nudges him at the right time it's a lovely then, approach player again by Paul Vale yeah yeah they play well it's McCarthy with the corner for them Pushing and shoving there as the uh, corner came in. And a free kick goes to Stoke City. A good punch by Muggleton, that. You know, he didn't hear the whistle go. He committed himself, came bravely, came in amongst them, and it was a good punch. Well, now the second half gone. Ian Bogie's goal, giving Port Vale the 1 0 lead. Solido. A bit of frustration showing there in the Canadian. I think he was trying to say something, wasn't he? About his shirt, Brian. And pulled off. Keen into it. Well, Tankard looked for a moment as though he was going to concede the corner, but a quick readjustment and it became just a throw. Pesky Solido, Kevin Keen, here's Clarkson with a crossfoot hit in early, and the keeper just clawed at that one, Muscle White. But here's McCarthy. The long ball forward, cut out quite easily by Sanford. Stoke putting on pressure now, looking for this equalising goal. Wallace, Gleghorn losing out to McCarthy. Bogey stretching to get to that one. Mills, and now Guppy. Good left foot on him, and arching the ball in towards Mills, but Overson was equal to it. Clarkson now completing the clearance. Good bit of full-back play there. Up to Scott. Goal kick to Port Vale. You see, it looks to me as though the Port Vale midfield, Brian, get to support their front men quicker than the Stoke boys are doing at the moment. They're, they're very quick to support the front. It's either bogey, he'll go when the ball's on the opposite side, one of them is making a run to support the front early. Tankards. Sanford. Rescue Solido. Hold up for a minute. Keane playing it in. Tried to find Scott with it on the far side. Scott does well. But Hill in the end concedes the corner. The rain slanting in again. As Kevin Keane goes across for the corner, Vince Overson comes up once more. Sanford in the box, Scott at the near post, another six-footer. Played wide again towards Sanford, but it was uh, Hill who got up very well indeed for Port Vale. Wallace playing it wide, here's Keane again, putting a lower cross in this time. Keane again, Duppy getting it clear. And Guppy going well clear now. Clarkson coming across, but there are white shirts getting up in support. Porter amongst them. But Guppy! Good piece of work, and Glover get there. Well, Guppy carried that ball from virtually just outside his own penalty area, held on for it for so long, and then succeeded in getting a really testing shot in that Muggleton... Uh, to leap across the save. Well, that was outstanding, Brian, wasn't it? Great skill. Here he is on his left peg. He jinked past one, looks up, nothing on, jinked past two, and now he lines himself up, and it's a great strike on target. And there we thought Glover was following up, but he just hesitated. Good skill, good play, and well done, Guppy. Come on, get on, 
Glover. McCarthy. Hill getting it forward. The Mills pulled back by the linesman's flag. Well, I suppose Lou Macari's got uh, Simon Sturridge and John Gale, a couple of strikers he can come on if he wants to uh, inject some new life up front. I, I would just feel that Pesky Salido looks a thorn, really, in the, in the heart of the defence, the Port Vale defence, and therefore I'd, I'd be inclined to leave him on. Scotty just wants to be moving about, he wants to get himself a little bit more mobile. Quite heavy rain now here in Stoke. McCarthy. Lee Glover. McCarthy shots. Oh, nice. An excellent piece of work. A readjustment again there by Dean Glover. Saw the ball going over his head, but that little backward flick there, the headed pass back to uh, Paul Musselwhite, was enough to hold up uh, Pesky Solido. He's done exceptionally well, Dean Glover. He's yeah, a he solid has. player, composed. He's read the situations. He's done exceptionally well in the heart of that defence. I think they're going to bring on Simon Sturridge very shortly. Ah, oh, Stoke City. And caught out a little bit there. Lee back with Glover getting in. Mills. McCarthy. Trying to get to that byline. Shoved over by Gleghorn, but Port Vale may have looked in their fans certainly looked for a. I couldn't tell whether it was inside the box or out or something, but anyway. It was inside the box, but I'm not sure of that. And it looks a bit of a body check on Gleghorn here. Just a little bit of a check with it. Having said that, having seen it there, I would say referee have made another good decision. It's Toddy Orlickson who's coming off, and Simon Sturridge, number 12, who's on. And a really heavy shower now. League lover. Swarming about ahead of him, here he is. Keane, hold on for it too long. There was a foul on the uh, Stoke number seven. Free kick quickly taken. Here's Keith Scott. Long range shot, goal kick. So, what do you fancy, Lou Macari? wants Sturridge to do. It looks like he's taking up a position on the right-hand side here, doesn't it? It looks as though he's asked him to go out and take Tankard on, you know, which he'll find difficult because Tankard's got good pace. Sanford gets it clear. But I feel with Sturridge, he has got that ability to go by people and to cross the ball. And uh, really, there hasn't been a lot of crossing from the Stoke um, team, uh, from the wide men. They haven't really got the supply into the front men. Simon, yet another Birmingham City connection in the Stoke side. Keane gets the ball forward. Escusolino held up again, free kick to Stoke. Vince Overson up once again. Looking for Keane to float the little header in. Just touched on there by Keith Scott. Yes, Keith Scott definitely got the faintest of touches on that. Just move the ball. Here it comes in there. And you'll see Scott just gets a touch here. Just a flick and it goes straight on to the goalkeeper. to McCarthy now for Hill it's Glover Tanker got there first finds Guppy good away 
awareness there by Guppy. A good play by Tankard, but the cross was delayed long enough for Wallace to get in there. Port Vale's throw. It's the last quarter of the game now. McCarthy. Well, he held uh, Overson back there. Free kick. 20 minutes to go. Muggleton's kick. Scott with a header. I think Glover will get to that. You know, there's something that seems to lack in our game at the moment, a player with the skill to be able to just hold the ball and caress the ball and to just take players on when you need to. And Guppy's got that ability, isn't he, Brian? He has indeed. He's good to watch, isn't he? Up comes Muscle White. Well, Raji looking serious isn't he there and trying to work it out I think I've got it right he must be saying to himself I think I've got it right they're solid at the back the midfield are competing and the wide men are doing their job well I mean without laboring the point the secret weapon has been Greavesy and Greavesy's remark about Port Vale I would have thought that was John's uh, team talk today what a motivator that would have been for John Rudge mine Greavesy can motivate anybody couldn't he Spreads it wide this time now for Guppy. Here he is again. Swarming, uh, there were four Stoke players swarming around him then. Scott can't keep it in play. Caught by also. So Goodson gets it clear. Overson back to Muggleton. Solido. Clarkson to Key. Time beginning to become the enemy of uh, Stoke City, but here's Sanford. Pesky Solido on the far side, sliding in, but never really with a real and realistic hope of getting that one. Goal kick. And that's what they've got to be looking for, Stoke. They've got to now start pushing the fullbacks wide and forward, Brian, and start getting crosses into that box. They haven't tried that yet. And there it goes, sailing across, just a yard away from Pesca Salido. But that's what they need to be doing. I'll be asking the fullbacks now to say, start volunteering, start taking a chance of getting forward on the ball side. Lover. Mills up alongside him, and McCarthy up alongside him. McCarthy chipping it in, a lovely little ball now. Glover after this one. But a lot of credit there to Sigurdsson. Corner for Port Vale. Dean Glover started to go forward to this one, then had a look around and thought, well, no, maybe the time's getting uh, coming close for us to be just a little more cautious. We've got a, a lead here to preserve for the next 15 minutes or so. McCarthy. It was Kevin Keane who hammers that one away. Tankard versus Sturridge. Just kept in play. Oh, he wasn't kept in play. Free kick, right? Oh, free kick, and make a pop. Yeah, he just, he just pulled him back. Tankard just pulled Sturridge back. That's it. Oh, given away again. Nice little play there by Porter. And now, uh, Glover to Guppy. Trying to get round Overson. See what the referee is going to do. He's well, it looked to me, Brian, as though Iverson just stepped on him there. Yeah. You know, just stepped on the side of his leg. Guppy had just checked back, and Iverson seemed to go in with his studs and just caught Guppy on the leg. 
Do you want treatment or don't you, says the referee. No, he doesn't, so it's, it's not too sure. A bit a of shoving push. and pushing there. Right. And, I think and it there was goes the stud. Yeah, that was oh, a bit that's, silly of Vince. That's out of order. Yes, I think if the referee had had the slow motion camera there, he might have taken a bit of action against uh, yes, Vince yeah, Iverson. Yes, you know, there, you know where your foot's going, Brian, and he knew his foot was going on his leg. For me, that is what I felt, anyway. Mills. Back to bogey. Back still further to Andy Hill. Porter. McCarthy. Hill struggling to get to that one. So unlucky. Wasn't it a good build-up, though, Lovely right? build-up. You know, simple one-touch football going on, good movement off the ball, and it was just that uh, maybe it's that rain that's coming down, it just skidded that ball just off the top and it just got away from him. Gleghorn. Up to Wallace. And now for Scott. Shot on the ball. McCarthy brings it away. Chance for League Lover. McCarthy again. Bogey. Mills. Picking out Guppy. Bogey. Dean Glover. Forward towards League Lover. And it'll be a Stoke goal kick. There he is, there's Rudgy, shouting out his orders. Keep it tight, keep it sensible. Don't make any silly mistakes, he'll be saying. He was filling our ears with uh, tales of misfortune before the start, wasn't he, about all the players who were out and so on, but... He's a professional at it, isn't he? <laughs> Lovers free kick, a little too high for Lee Mills. Good covering again in that Stoke defence that time by Andy Hill, but it's gone straight to Clarkson, and now here's Simon Sturridge inside for Clarkson again. Not forward, but Glover getting it away over somebody's chest. The whole game at the moment compressed with all the players about 10 yards either side of the halfway line. Overson. Getting the header in now for Clarkson to chip it forward. Tankard. Andy Porter knocking it forward. Overson getting it back to his keeper. And 12 he, minutes left now. Andy Hill's had a good debut, isn't he, really, Brian? He's been very solid over there. Good defensive qualities. Well, Griffiths took the safe way out. And you can't blame him for that with uh, Piscis Salido breathing down his neck. Quarter there for Stoke. Stoke will look for somebody to come powering in here. Overson and Sanford are there once again. Scott stationed at the near post. But it was Griffiths with a header that got it clear. Up to McCarthy. Played by Glover to Bogey. Oka making another substitution, I think Graham Potter might be coming on. I think it might be Keith Scott who's coming off. Ogie. Portvale ball. Also another former Birmingham player. And it's Scott who's coming off. Graham Potter. I always thought Potter right, was more of a midfield well, player. I, I thought he was midfield defender. With Pratt. John Gow on the line, I thought maybe Gow would have been going on if, if Scotty was replaced. 
Keith Scott comes off. I don't think he's any too happy with that decision. It's as though Sturridge has gone in to play up front. Yes, indeed, and uh, Potter has gone to, well, left side midfield. Yeah, and he moved them all across one, I think. Andy Hill. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's shown yeah. with, within the game, isn't it? I wouldn't argue with that. No. Lee Sanford, former Portsmouth defender with the throw for Stoke. Offside against Lee Glover. Goodson winning it in the air. Here's Guppy again for Port Vale. Clarkson. It's a Port Vale throw, which Alan Tankard will take. I've got three players in contention, to be truthful, and right. uh, they've done exceptionally well. Port Vale throw. Enjoy that job, don't you? Love it. <laughs> the mistakes you can make doing that, Brian, which I have done. Pesky Salido, just a little touch on, but there's no support up there. You see... What Stoke have done is taken the height now with Scott going out of the forward line, hoping to play balls down the side of the central defenders and rely on pace. Keen. Foul on Gleghorn by Porter. Fifth with the header clear. Not a lot of ground on it though. Pesky Salido. Sturridge knocking it back. Leghorn. Might look for something here on the right foot, but it's charged down by the Port Vale defenders. A whole wall of them there. This is Potter. Couldn't get his left work operate, left foot operating there, but it'll be a throw for Stoke. He's taking it. Potter again. Played by Gleghorn, Sanford. Testing times these for Port Vale, but uh, Porter's got it clear. Here's Bogey, a little bit of acceleration. Lee Glover's up ahead of him. He's looking for support from Tankard on this side. Doesn't get it, but Dean Glover following up well now for Port Vale. Guppy. That's a good ball, a good bit of play again by Guppy. Hill. Yes. So Goodson and now Sanford coming to the last five minutes. Port Vale about to make a substitution. Tony Naylor coming on. That's 
taking uh, Lee Glover off. Done a lot of good work up front. Lee worked Glover, very hard, especially in the second half. He's worked exceptionally hard, made some good runs, but he's just shaking his head, and so he's got a little knock there, and I think that's why they're making the change. Tony Naylor, a striker originally with Crew Alexandra. Oh, that was misjudged there by Griffiths. Oh, and there's a chance for Stoke and Sturridge somehow contrived to put a glorious opportunity wide of the far post. Uh, All starting actually with uh, a misheader by uh, Griffiths. Young Gareth Griffiths. Here it is now, he's directed it back in there, you should never do that, young man. And here's a golden opportunity, and Sturridge oh. maybe hadn't been on long enough to get the feel and the weight of the ball, and just try to place it in instead of sticking it in low below the, beside the goalkeeper. So it remains 1-0 to Port Vale, with about four minutes left. Well, I'm going in for my man of the match, Brian. I'm, I've had, I thought in the Stoke side, Overson done exceptionally well at the back, there he and is, Pesky Salido looked lively up front. But I've got to go with Port Vale. Port Vale have been the better side, in my opinion, on the day. And I'm going for Bogey, the midfield player who scored the goal. He's made some tremendous runs. Well, here's Sturridge. Stop to in full flight for a moment there because he yeah. thought Stoke were going to equalise. I thought Stoke might be grabbing an equaliser. That does happen when I give man of the match. So I think Bogey. he's made some tremendous runs well, in. Well, here he is on the field. ball now. And there he goes and gives the ball away. Thanks very much, Bogey. But, but his goal Guppy is... has been outstanding as well. But he has won the match if they get the result, Port Vale, for them. And therefore, that's why he gets man of the match. From me. Bogey, up goes Porter, Clarkson going in, good jump that time by Griffiths. But Gleghorn, a tenacious player, Gleghorn. Bogey just flicking it away. Tankard playing it forward, but Guppy can't get that one. A throw to Stoke, with two and a half to go. Vince Overson. Andy Porter with a header. Now McCarthy. Playing it wide. Get up there after that one, he says to the substitute Naylor. Let them chase it. And it's a good ball at this stage, Brian, wasn't it? Over the top, turning the defender. Silly free kick to give away, actually, by Naylor, but uh, a very good ball, very intelligent ball. Goalkeeper taking it. Time is really precious for Stoke now. Up goes Lee Mills, beating Overson in the air that time. Port Vale looking for their first league win of the season. Having scored their first league goal of the season. And they've defended well. That's a free kick. Foul by Wallace on Guppy. Dean Glover's done well. I've mentioned it before. He was one of the players on my shortlist. I think he's been outstanding at the back. He's marshaled his defence. He's been in, com in complete control of the match from the start. Hit long by uh, Muscle White. Here's McCarthy. Porter playing it in once more, good jump by Overson. Now Bogey, man of the match, knocks it wide for Andy Hill. Again, Vince Overson is there, he won't accept defeat yet. Run well into the last minute. Potter taking it down the flank, there's more defending yet for Port Vale to do here. Sturridge with a bit of pace. 
playing it wide again for Potter. Wallace waiting in the middle and Keane's in the middle too and it's gone over the top. Wide of the goal, no kick. It might just be the last alarm for Port Vale. It's a good cross here from Potter. Right across and Keane climbs very high, just awkward, just cannot get his forehead to the ball. Just hit him slightly on the back of the head. First time I've had the pleasure of uh, coming to a Potteries derby, John. And it's, it's not been spectacular, but it's got a good passion about it, and I've enjoyed it, I must say, and uh, I, I love days when underdogs do well. Yeah, they are. They are good days in football, aren't they? I've had them against me, and they hurt, but at the same time, Port Vale haven't had the best of starts. That's right. A certain member of our staff has motivated That's them right. unbelievably, and uh, he should get the freedom of the city. I don't know about Stick. Well, I saw Stoke last week at uh, winning at Leicester, and they won well there, particularly their first half play was brilliant. Uh, and they really haven't approached that today. To be fair, they haven't been allowed to approach that, right, have they? You've got to give Bell well, nothing but credit. They've really worked very hard, closed them down, and played it sensibly. Up goes Hill, wins it in the air. They're playing uh, nearly a minute of time added on. If Stoke are going to do anything, they've got to do it now. Potter. And there's the final whistle. It's three precious points for Port Vale with a goal by Ian Bogey early in the second half. And uh, Stoke, who'd started the day in this Potteries derby, hoping that a handsome victory would take them to the top. It hasn't worked out that way, but a lot of credit to Port Vale, who battled valiantly in defence had the better of things in the midfield, and when it came to it, had that one crucial moment when the smiling Ian Bogey stuck the ball inside the near post, beating uh, goalkeeper Carl Muggleton to give Port Vale the three points. Let's have a word with John Rudge, the Port Vale manager. Well, John, you deserve that, and, uh, and your first win of the season, and you must be well satisfied with your performance well it's a great result I don't think it's a vintage performance it went to a vintage game but we've managed to win a Potters derby and that's very important for us but you approached it the right way you got in possession in midfield and scored the goal that mattered well that was right Ian Bogie just managed to squeeze it in the near post I don't know he's managed to do that until well, it was the goalkeeper's fault I think really. yeah well I mean he's there's a good build up play for it and then he's managed to squeeze it in the near post there wasn't a lot of really what you call clear cut chances but we battled away for it and possession wise I think we had a little bit more than them and overall it was a great win for us but it could have been a draw because Sturridge missed a great chance for Stoke near the end he did yeah there's no question about that but I mean uh, that's the way it goes we managed to get the three points and obviously our supporters will be delighted with the result and you're off to a winning to a winning position now well that's right it's good to get back on the road because um, we had a good start and then we've had a hiccup with the injuries we've had and obviously, you know, this will give us that confidence which you want. OK, just hold that, just one second, because we haven't got time to talk to Ian Bogey, but here's the Ensley Man of the Match award, if you'd just like to give it to your player. Well done, Ian. Cheers, got that. Very nice. Oh! <laughs> they won 1-0 last season, they've done it again today. In a couple of minutes, the views of Jimmy Greaves and, of course, all the action from yesterday's Ensley League fixtures. Join us in a... Well, we've already heard from the winning manager. What about the loser? Lou Macari is now with Gary Newborn. Well, I would think the losing manager's had a right go at his players for giving away a goal with a goalkeeper's fault at the near post and missing two great chances near the end. Is that what happened in the dressing room? Uh, no, I think we're more than disappointed, Gary. I thought we treated the game like a five-a-side match. Uh, it wasn't certainly no five-a-side match. We were playing against Port Vale. Uh, we lacked a lot of passion, a lot of commitment. Uh, and it was quite uh, it's quite obvious to watch right throughout the game that we weren't going to get stuck in, we weren't going to treat it the way the game should have been treated, uh, which is to get at them, get a few tackles in. I can't remember us having any tackles in the game. I can't remember us winning balls in midfield. And at the end of the day, although you say the goal, we should have stopped it, uh, probably the better team won. Well, the, be the best team did win on the day, Lou, but as football goes, you had two great chances at the end. We did. Uh, I think if we'd have scored them, Gary, we'd be sitting in here delighted that we'd sneaked a draw out of it, but we didn't really deserve a draw. And I think our lads are going to have to realise that, especially here at home, and especially in front of our crowd, our crowd just want commitment from everybody. And if they get that, they're not too disappointed at the result, whether it's win, lose or draw, but we didn't give commitment today. 
Jimmy, is that a fair appraisal? I mean, he seems to have put it in a nutshell, though. Uh, tough stuff by Lou. He's absolutely right. Totally honest. They didn't show a lot of commitment. Port Vale were... <laughs> oh, no. Port Vale for the Premier League. <laughs> uh, but they were the best side, Vale. They were. They, they actually did give the commitment. They showed it. They might well have scored two or three, actually. And Lou's right. He's got to be disappointed with Stoke. But Port Vale... Well, Raji has got to be well pleased, hasn't he? They started the second half in, in the best possible fashion, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. They scored a goal, which, uh, which of course, is the, the important thing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you've, got to, you've, 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 you've obviously got to look at uh, Carl Muggleton's situation here. Bogey does very well. He keeps going, shows a bit of pace. And you always, whether you agree with it or not and whether the goalkeeper could be deemed to be half expecting a cross back because there are Port Vale players running in uh, for the cross you have to put it down at the keeper unfortunately it's a near post shot but having said That's that it was a good run in the first it was place. a super run by bogey uh, fully agree with snoz he definitely was a man of the match i felt as well what about steve guppy he could have put them two up yeah i mean he looks good player to me yeah. guppy he looks a real find i uh, I, I don't say I'm surprised that he's at Port Vale having come from Newcastle and Wickham. You better be careful with him. So I, I have to choose my words carefully. But Port Vale have got a very good player here and he looks to me as though he could be playing for a better club if there were a better club than Port Vale, which of course we all know there isn't a better club than Port Vale. And just very quickly, Stoke could have equalised ah, in the last well, few I mean, You've got to look at this and say, well, there's not, there's all, when, when you're 1-0, when it's 1-0, there's always likely to be chances going. And really, Sturridge, Sturridge will not be happy with this, this miss because I know he had only just come on as a substitute, but you have to be alert at all time. It's what we said in the first half, and that really was a very, very poor miss. OK, Jimmy, well, what of the fans then? Because I should think one set are very happy and some are rather disappointed. We can get a few views now by joining Dennis Coth at the Victoria Ground. Well, we've got the jury here, or at least a third of a jury, and the Port Vale fans here to my right, they're smiling and happy. John, you won here last season, you've done it again. Yeah, we're very delighted to come here and win. It's always nice, particularly without two key players, Aspin and Foyle. And to go into a derby match without two players of that calibre, we'd have been happy for a point. So we're over the moon. Yeah. Delighted. Right. Let's go to a Stoke fan and Lindsay. You look miserable. What went wrong today? I don't know. We just can't get any goals. I think the they all wanted to win it more. Well, Philip, you've seen the matches this season. You win at Leicester and you can't win at home against uh, your neighbours, Vale. No, no. I think they just wanted to win it more for their supporters and what our players did for us. Let's go quickly to uh, Helen, another smiling Vale fan. You must be pleased with this to beat your rivals. It's brilliant. It was such a game. It was a cracker. Everybody was brilliant.